The first step in the PAR process, the P stands for planning. This is like the tee box in golf where you plan what's important, gather uh, info, and schedule things out. Planning makes it easier for you and your team to keep focused on what's most important instead of getting lost in the shiny details. To plan what's important you need, what the big overall goal is, uh, why that goal is important to y'all, and the outline of where your guys are going. Draw a roadmap for this, and on the roadmap include um, where you guys are starting at the beginning and where you guys want to end up at the end, at the big overall goal. And last, in between those two points, set up the big steps you guys need to get to that goal from where you are now to where that goal is. Also write down um, when you guys want to get there or the due date and who's coming along for the ride. Note, the simpler you clarify what's important, the more powerful and focused everyone on your team will be. Gather info and add the helpful stuff to the what's important document. For each manager and team member, they can even help you to clarify the stage if you want them to. It typically makes them feel more invested in the uh, task management process. And you can get value from each of their different perspectives. Also, you can gather info from customers, beta testers, basically any info that's needed to help you guys get started. Schedule things out by writing each person's name by each task, but be considerate of your team members. Of these things, four things, their strengths and experience, what they enjoy working on and are naturally curious about, their thinking wavelength, which you could get for free on iloveshinyobjects.com forward slash thinking. The thinking wavelength will, it will increase their productivity uh, and help you know what to give them for each task or project to put them in their highest contribution zone. And the fourth it, thing you need to consider is what you current, what they currently have on their plate. Note, if you need more help with this, the first video we ever did and course is all about delegation and we'll help you with this further. P.S. Don't over plan. There are really only th two things you need. One, a goal and the people to work to get to that goal. That's it. If you're spending more time in your planning and procedures than you are helping your team, you're doing it wrong and that should be a red flag for you. Manage and focus on the team, not the checklist, and this will give you the best results. Let these goals and the time commitment force everyone to keep rethinking, how are we going to get these things done? What uh, can we do to simplify what we are doing so that we can get it done in that time frame we have set, but still get the main things we want accomplished, accomplished. Step two in the PAR process, the A stands for accomplishing. So this is the tee off where you present what's important, uh, who is involved and, their, and what the, each of their different roles are and any tools you guys are going to use to collaborate or track your process. Guiding the team to the fairway. Be their Will Smith caddy like in the movie The Legend of Bagger Vance, which by the way is one of my favorite movies of all time. On the transcript, you can see a link that will take you to a YouTube video that uh, gives you a, an essence or a good experience of what kind of wise counsel um, I'm referring to that Will Smith played in that movie. So try to check in with everyone via whatever tool or software you guys have decided to use um, preferably face to face just so you could see their facial expressions. So if you can meet in person, great, or Skype, great, or some other software where you could see him face to face through a video conference call, all great. 
and these are the things you want to ask them what are you working on today is there anything you're struggling with is there something that might stress you out or trip you up today this how these questions help you be more proactive and stop things that will uh, slow down the entire team's progress from hitting that goal how would the best insert their name uh, you can imagine deal with this and then after you've asked all those questions if they still need a little more help or wise counsel uh, or maybe any shortcuts or tips you know uh, that's the time to present it to them and give them anything they need emotionally to do better like a sympathetic ear to clarify their thoughts uh, or just encouragement uh, if they are feeling down to help them stay in their highest contribution zone. The third step in the PAR process is the R. The R stands for refining. So refining daily ask yourself is this project still a priority if yes did we make enough progress yesterday to uh, hit the deadline we set if not why what are the reasons what can we learn from those things if no it's no longer a priority does it make sense to stop working on it if yes then write down anything you've learned from uh, that project or task so far that could potentially help you guys out on future tasks or projects. And uh, maybe there's some parts of that that you can use in, in things that have come, become the new priority. If you guys need more help with prior, priority, um, the second video on YouTube and on the side in the course was all about prioritization, how to prioritize using the what crap what technique. At the end of each day, spend a small amount of time reviewing how the day went, the highs and the lows. Uh, how can you keep the highs going more and more? And what can you learn from those lows? Ask yourself, what if our time for these tasks were required to be cut in half? How would I or we reprioritize everyone's task to fit the goal that is now required to be done in half the time. How would we rethink, simplify, reduce our quality to get it done in that new half time frame? How would, what would be, be the absolute most important, fewest things we would have to get done regardless of the time frame? How could, what could we let go of? um if if this actually happened how can i use the above answers to help my team to work on the most important things first so that in case the project did have to be cut in half or whatever increment shorter everyone would be better prepared to handle it halfway through the project based on the deadlines you guys set. Make adjustments just like a basketball team does at halftime. Set a reminder of when this halfway point or day would be on your phone, calendar, etc. It's good not to be too structured for the first half of the project to the point that it restricts creativity, idea generation, or experimentation, trial and error. But once you have reached this halfway point, it's time to finalize the task and simplify them so that you can really get those shiny objects out the door. Remind everyone why they're doing it at this halfway point and make sure that you aren't pushing them too hard without enough breaks. Half times are also very beneficial for basketball teams just because it gives them a significant amount of time to rest. Do the same with your team. Maybe um, give them a Friday off so they could have a longer weekend or maybe even a company retreat or just um, in days early, um, take them out to lunch, etc. At the end of the project, 
create a journal which you guys keep and use for future projects and tasks of all the things you guys learned. Ask yourself these types of questions. What did we do well? And where did we not do so well? And what things do we want to remember for the future projects or tasks? The three R's and why. The first star is on the screen. It's the roadmap for this entire course. The second is reviewing. Today you learn how to manage your task or projects using the PAR process. The first step in the PAR process is P. The P stands for planning. The second step in the PAR process is A, and the A stands for accomplish. Accomplishing uh, the task you set forth. And the third step in the PAR process is R. It's refining. This is where you learn and grow and continually get better at managing all your tasks. The third R is respond. If you would like the uh, checklist that corresponds with this video and helps you implement it, um, you click on the first link in the description below. If you would like a faster, easier, more convenient way to apply this info that you learn in this video, um, click on the second link below. It takes you to the course that this video came from, which is all about application. Third, if you just don't want to imagine a world without these I love shiny objects.com videos, uh, click on the third link below, which is a Patreon link. Seven grand gets you in one of these videos. There's only 13 spots left, I believe. And uh, $7, just $7 helps you not have to imagine a world without these I love shiny objects.com. So why? Why do we do this shiny stuff? Is to help you work smarter and faster so that you can have more time in your life with the shiny objects you love. Our goal for you is not more promotion, money, or praise. Although these videos and the courses will definitely help you get those. It's to give you more time to get lost in the shiny objects that bring you joy and meaning in life. And hopefully, those shiny objects will leave a great impact on this world when you are gone. Something you can really be proud of. So no more feeling bad for getting distracted. I dare you to be different. I challenge you every week to devote a little more time to working smarter and more efficiently so that you can give a little more time to the shiny objects you truly love in life. Have a shiny month, souls. Thank you, we love you guys, and we hope we have helped you out in some small shine.